What's up, Bug Doug with Dini in the Garage. I'm currently leaning over the engine bay of my 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the 4.7 liter V8. Now, among other things that are strange and a little annoying about this particular V8, uh, it does not have a normal cooling filling procedure. You have to bleed it using a provided bleeding port. What I'm talking about is this guy right here at the end of your upper radiator hose. This is your alternator and power steering for reference. What you have to do is go ahead and take an eight millimeter hex and oh boy okay crack that guy off and go ahead and pull it out so you filled your whole system with coolant right of course <laughs> okay you filled your whole system with coolant um, and you've run it and let it cool down and filled it up a couple times like you would with a normal vehicle um, and you think you're done, right? You're good to go, you're wrong. On the 4.7, you'll never get all the air out unless you crack this open while you're uh, running the motor and keep an eye out for air bubbles while you slowly fill over here at your normal radiator hookups. So you're gonna take that eight millimeter bleeder off, you're gonna take your normal radiator cap off, you're gonna get some of your favorite Powerade. Uncle Jerry was here, I just have it in the Powerade thing still. Um, and you're gonna go ahead and uh, start the engine and while it's running you're gonna be looking for air bubbles right here and you absolutely will see them bubbling up uh, and you're gonna keep filling this until the air bubbles stop. It's gonna take a little bit, you're gonna wanna let it run for a while. Now what we're gonna have to do is wait for this to get up to temperature. As soon as that thermostat opens and coolant starts flowing through the whole system, you'll start seeing the air bubbles raise to the top. Once the Jeep has reached temperature and the thermostat is open, you're going to wanna to begin slowly adding coolant over at the radiator. This will force more coolant out of the bleeder and flush any remaining air out with it. Once you're sure all your air bubbles have been removed, you can replace your cap. Be careful, this coolant is now going to be very warm. Doesn't need to be too tight, just snug. We'll replace our radiator cap. Clean up any coolant. And shut the engine down. This is super important if you have a 4.7. You have to do it this way. Otherwise, you're leaving air in the system and inviting your engine to get a little bit hotter than normal. On an engine like the 4.7, that's a big problem. As I'm sure a lot of you know, when the 4.7 gets too hot, you loosen up your valve seats and then these things drop valve seats and they eat themselves. And that's no fun for anybody. I have heard pre people suggest that this method of having to bleed the cooling system is one of the primary reasons these things drop valve seats the way they do. People don't bleed their coolant properly. They let their engine operate a little bit too hot, just not overheating, but just a little bit above where they should be, and you're putting that undue stress on your valve seats, you drop them and you you know, you know eat your motor in a Walmart parking lot somewhere. So this is super important. It should be noted that you have to start this when the engine's cold. Don't go pulling that bleeder valve or this cap when the engine is even remotely hot. I mean, absolutely cold. You parked it that night, you came out the next morning and did it. Uh, additionally, you probably didn't see too many air bubbles coming up out of mine because I just did this the other day. I just after the fact realize, hey man, there might be some people out there that don't know about this. I wanna spread the knowledge, make sure we keep some of these four sevens on the road so that they're not all ended up at junkyards with uh, uh, valve seats all chewed up. All right, so if you got any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk box as always. Thanks for watching, see you next time.